In online business, it's not as simple as choosing what you want to do. You also got to choose how you're going to do it. If you're a doctor, this might be called your specialty. But in online business, it's called your niche. Are you looking to travel with your family while making a full-time income? You're in the right place. Welcome to Touring Freedom with your host, Jason Wyatt. Hey, you're listening to the Touring Freedom Podcast, and I'm Jason, and I'm here to help you on your journey to your journey. My goal is to help you build a completely mobile income so that you can enjoy a location-independent lifestyle. If you've been following along with the podcast so far, you'll know that we've covered several different methods of generating mobile income online. You know, affiliate income, physical products, digital products, and, and even selling ads were just a few examples of what we covered in the last episode. Now, to implement those income streams, you have to do things like blogging, YouTube, or, you know, just simple social media marketing. These are just a few examples of what is referred to in general as online marketing. That is, they are all different methods to draw the attention to yourself or your offer on the internet. And there are many more examples of ways you can do this. Now that's what I do is internet marketing. I've been doing it in some form of fashion since 2008. Currently most of what I do is helping other small businesses with their online marketing. The whole reason I do this podcast is to guide you to creating your online business if you don't have one yet, and then to give you creative marketing techniques and strategies to help you grow it into a full-time income. Today, what I'm going to be talking about is niches, because before you start talking to folks, you've got to know what you're going to be talking about, you know? You see, the online marketing game, the key is focus. You can't just post about whatever random thing is on your mind. You got to stick to a topic or you can't keep anyone's attention. If we look at YouTube specifically as an example, if someone watched a video on your channel about word processing software and then the next one was about easy arithmetic shortcuts for homeschoolers, nobody is going to want to subscribe to your channel. They will only pay attention if they are interested, and if they never know what's coming next, how could they ever be interested? I mean, would you have ever gotten interested in The Office if every once in a while they threw in a Jersey Shore at you? I mean, you would just turn off the TV and get tired of of watching random crap. Now, all that may be logical to you if you're just trying to get ad share revenue from YouTube, but this strategy is even more important in many other areas. For instance, if you're running an online store selling dog collars, you may want to also run a blog discussing topics relative to dog ownership. You can use the blog articles to draw the right crowd, and then you can direct them to buying your collars once they are reading your content. This is called content marketing. Point is, you got to figure out what kind of topics you're going to be talking about if you expect to grow an audience. I'm going to go over a lot of niches in this episode to try to show you how diverse the options can be. Not all these will be super relevant to you, obviously, but I hope it serves to spur some ideas and get your juices flowing. Now, really, this should be the first thing you do. I know we've already talked about some revenue sources, and that was a little bit out of order in the way you should actually do things, but I felt it was important to discuss first so that people understood how online businesses work. I wanted to show people that income is real and legitimate. Too many people scream scam when they hear online income, so I wanted to snuff that out quickly and get people to more comprehend what we're talking about before we move on to actually building something. Now, while I go over these, keep in mind that most of y'all are going to have to think about a sub-niche. That's right. You're going to have to niche down until you have a targeted audience, at least to start out with. Some niches will require that you be able to grab specific people's attention. Otherwise, you just blend in. I know there's a lot of people listening to this podcast that want to do something in the travel niche, but if you just throw up a YouTube channel focused on general travel, you're going to be drowned out by all the noise in that niche. The trick is to pick something where you stand out and gain an audience. 
once you start building that audience and you've built a reputation at that point then you can start branching out to other related topics to expand your audience keep that going over and over and, ex and expanding and expand it into related topics and you'll end up branched out into things you never thought you could do heck amazon started as a simple online bookstore now they're a one-stop shop e-commerce store that offers cloud computing and in-home microphones that spy on you i mean who would have thunk it most people don't even realize that yamaha started out making organs you know like the keyboard musical instrument organs not like hearts and livers <laughs> but now they're best known for motorcycles and atvs they still make some of the best saxophones money can buy i know i have one but what they did is get well known in a particular niche grow their audience build a reputation and then branch out so what you got to do is instead of making that travel youtube channel you got to niche down Heck, nowadays, even with family of four full-time traveling niche is getting pretty crowded, and, and, and that's already pretty niche down. Maybe your niche might be cool places you can go with family of four and a rig over 40 foot. I, I, I don't know. I haven't researched it, but that sounds like a pretty cool niche to me, and you could easily grow a very targeted audience. Just keep in mind that as I discuss some of these niches, that... These are broad umbrella niches that I'm discussing here, and you may need to niche down to narrow down your audience so that you are talking to a specific individual. My good friend Chad Elster loaned me his list of niches to help me prepare for this episode. I sat down with it for a little while and I added to it where I saw fit, and, and I took some away and I deleted those because it didn't quite fit into the mobile income that we're trying to generate on this podcast. And, and I think I have a pretty decent little list of niches. I mean, it's in no way complete and all comprehensive. There's an infinite number of niches out there, but I think this is a pretty good uh, representative list of niches, at least ones that you have the best shot at creating a mobile income. Now, in most cases, I'd be calling these niches and sub niches and then sub sub niches. But to avoid confusion in this episode, I'm going to refer to them as categories and then specific niches within those categories. And I won't be mentioning too many examples of sub niches under that, although I will give a few examples along the way. Most of the sub niching will be left up to you. First, let's talk about fast learning. Fast learning could take many forms like early education. An example of that might be the hooked on phonics stuff, right? Another example would be speed reading. That's been popular for several decades as well. But you could also do exam study and helping someone pass an exam. Think outside of the box on this. The exam could be the SATs, a licensing exam, or professional certification. It could be all kinds of different things. Now, I've already talked about the travel niche a little bit, but when you niche down, you could concentrate on traveling on a budget. RV traveling or being a world nomad, just for a few examples. Believe it or not, writing is also a big subject that people want to learn. You could talk about writing a book, self-publishing, or writing tools. What are writing tools, you may ask? Well, just as one example, there's a writing tool that you may be familiar with called Scrivener. Evidently, I've no never used it, but evidently it's a great tool. But it's frustrating to learn. The software itself is about 50 bucks, but over at Learn Scrivener Fast, they are able to actually charge more than twice that amount to teach people how to use it. So just think about the possibilities there. Again, I reiterate, use specific things like that as an example for inspiration for ideas and not necessarily as me telling you something that you should actually do. Public speaking is another thing that many people are looking for help with. There are professionals everywhere looking for help giving presentations, large and small. Sub niches you could concentrate on are things like how to speak, storytelling, getting paid for speaking engagements, conquering stage fright. I mean, the list goes on. Now, prepping and survival has been a huge category and sees periodic revivals. It's a topic that seems to ebb and flow in public awareness, and it depends a lot on the politics and the economy of the day. 
Within this niche, there are things like self-defense, food preservation, tools and weapons, and bugging out. If you haven't listened to the first episode, you may have missed me discussing the podcast I used to have on rabbits. Well, I started that focusing within the survival preparedness niche. There were tons of preppers at the time wanting to learn how to raise rabbits for meat in case of emergency. Once I grew that audience to a certain size, I started going to shows. I connected the two concepts using the fact that most people who raise show rabbits will choose one or two kits out of each litter to breed and further their lineage. And the rest of them out of that litter, they would either sell or butcher and put in the freezer. This is one of the techniques they would use to improve their show bloodlines. Doing this not only grew my audience by attracting show people, but also got the preppers into showing their rabbits. So this is actually a really good example of what I was discussing earlier in the episode about niching down into something specific in order to initially attract an audience and then branching out to grow your audience. I started out in the homesteader survivalist niche, but by the time I was done, I had homesteaders, showers, pet owners, they were all listening. You know, as I mentioned in the first episode, unfortunately, a tornado took my my rabbitry away and I just couldn't bear to continue. But if you want to hear the full story, it's probably better suited for the campfire. Now that we're talking about animals, it's a great niche category to be in. You could be teaching pet training, husbandry, or even livestock. And as I just demonstrated, this could bleed over into homesteading and other targeted audiences. Now, another good category to be in is beauty. Now, despite my impeccably good looks, I really know nothing about the niche. So some of the sub-niche examples I could think of are like skincare and makeup and hairstylist. I hope that gets you pointed in the right direction if you're interested in this niche, because if not, I'm probably no help. So let's move on to cooking, you know, because I like to eat. With today's trends and fads, there are numerous things you can talk about and used to to niche down and focus within the cooking category, like vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, clean eating, local eating, paleo, ethnic, keto. I mean, the list goes on. But if you focus in on a niche like paleo, just remember, you're probably going to have to niche that down like quick and easy paleo meals or paleo meals for large families. Just Keep it in mind and niche your audience down. Now, hobbies are another great category of niches that people love to get into. You just have to be careful here because it's got to be a hobby that people spend a lot of money on or else you'll never be able to monetize it. Some examples might be golf and hunting and fishing and and music. I mean, those are probably where the big money is in hobbies, but there are other ones that you could probably uh, make work like like woodworking and crafting and and all matters of needlework and and whatnot like that. Just make sure that you're niching down as well to start. Don't start just focusing on crocheting. Start with something like crocheting for people with arthritis. Now, the business category is alive and well also. When I say business category, this is specifically for people who want to climb the corporate ladder and sharpen their business skills. With this one, you could focus on things like marketing and advertising or sales skills, negotiation skills, growth hacking, among endless other business skills. Now we get to the category I refer to as the big four categories. These are health, wealth, relationships, and self-help. These are huge categories that are very popular. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone who didn't want to improve their life in one of these four areas. That type of popularity does two things. First, it means there's a ton of money to be had here. I mean, a ton. But with so much money being spent here, it also means that the competition is fierce. That means if you choose something in one of these four categories, you really have to focus down into a very specific sub-niche to differentiate yourself from the crowd. In other words, these are very tough categories, but if you make it, you can do way more than just make a nice living. So let's start the big four with self-help. 
This is a perennially popular topic, despite the grief it gets from some people. Within the self-help niche are things like productivity, creativity, time management, self-confidence, and even spirituality. You could break down spirituality into religion, faith healing, and, and even those crystal chakra thingies. I'm not even sure what those things are, but a good friend of mine is into them, and he makes his living that way. So, point is, self-help is a huge category and encompasses things that may never have been thought of before. Anything that helps someone improve themselves as a person falls into this category. Now, relationships is another biggie. Things like dating, marriage, sexuality, parenting, and even the opposite, like working through a divorce. Again, you will have to niche way down and speak to a very specific audience to get started in this category of niches. Now on to health and fitness. Now, I really see this as two different categories, but most people group them together. To me, health, health would cover things like stress relief, natural healing, anti-aging, maybe smoking cessation, while fitness covers things like bodybuilding, muscle toning, stamina, and stuff like that. The only niches that I consider crossing over into both health and fitness categories is weight loss and diet. Now, obviously, weight loss and diet is a huge niche, and you'd want to break down into something like weight loss for those over 50 or after pregnancy or diet for diabetes. Now for the biggest of the big, wealth. This is the biggest for obvious reasons. It's also the most crowded space of them all for obvious reasons. Within the wealth category are things like investing, debt, personal finance, retirement, foreign currency, and yes, even online business, which I guess is the niche I find myself in. This category will likely require the deepest niching of all in order to break into. If you decide to go into real estate, you could discuss flipping properties, but not just simple flipping. Buying, renovating, and flipping. But not just simple buying, renovating, and flipping. You need to focus on buying, renovating, and flipping multifamily homes. Again, this is just an example of how far down you need to dig to find your audience. And I'm not saying that this is exactly the niche that you should be in. Now that we've discussed all, or at least most, of the potential niches, let's move on to the most essential step. Actually choosing and researching a niche. It's important that you go through these steps that I'm about to describe, or at least something similar, because it really could be the difference between a successful online business and one that flops. Success relies both on your motivation, and in other words, something that you're excited about, and the potential profitability of that niche. You gotta make sure that you're building a business around something that makes you excited to get out of bed every day and work. Then you will put your marketing hat on to analyze the profitability of your niche topics that you're interested in. A great place to start with this is your own interests. If you can find a niche that you're already interested in, it could be a very good niche to be in because it, the excitement is one of the things that will motivate you to put the effort in that it takes to make the online business a success. So here are a few questions to ask yourself. Maybe these will help you discover some of the things you might like to be into, but you may not realize it or they may not be top of mind. Which of the niches that I went over earlier do you feel like you buy a lot of products in? What books or magazines do you read on a regular basis? What websites do you find yourself surfing all the time? What are some hobbies that you have? Hopefully these questions help you figure out what some of your biggest passions and interests are. Fun and games isn't the only reason you should think about for choosing a niche. You don't want to overlook your skills and knowledge. So while those questions I just asked can lead you down some hobbies or passions, now we're going to think of some skills you may be overlooking that could be useful in the marketplace. Like, if you had a job that taught you a skill set that could prove very valuable, maybe you went to school for a particular topic, or maybe you have some sort of acquired skill through years of self-study or experience. Whatever it may be, you want to identify the skills, strength, and knowledge that you already have. Make a list of them so that you have it for reference. 
If you have a problem thinking about your skill sets or knowledge, you may not be giving yourself enough credit. Go around asking family and friends what they see as your perfect profession. Don't use those words, though. Say something like, if I could do anything for money, what do you think I would most enjoy? Even if you don't think there's any money in it. Now, obviously, you're going to have to reword that a bit if some of your friends are more on the immature side, but you get the point. Now, hopefully after completing that list, you've got a very large list, which would include your interests, hobbies, and skills. We want to go ahead and pare that down to the five you're most interested in. This does not mean you only make a list of five. Many times it takes making a list of 20 or 30 to be able to come up with five good ones. So once you get your list all sorted out, it's time to sit down and test profitability. Of course, there's no 100% surefire way to ensure a niche will be profitable, but there are some things that we can check real quick to, to give some indications. Think of it as kind of a preliminary testing. Basically, we're going to make sure that some people are, are spending money on the topics you're interested in pursuing. A couple of things we want to know about each of these five topics that you've pared your list down to. Number one, are people passionate about the topic? And number two, are people spending money on the topic? There are some pretty serious techniques that you can use to do this. You can go way in depth and spend a lot of money on tools to help you in your research, but we're not going to go in that direction. We're going to start off with a simple Google search. That may not tell us everything there is to know, but it's a simple technique that could very easily tell you enough to know if the niche is profitable and worth exploring. Just keep in mind that this is best done on a computer and not a mobile device. We really need the full Google experience so that you can see everything. Instead of telling you what to do, I'll just give you an example. Suppose one of the things on your list is the fact that you are very proficient in Microsoft Excel. We're going to use the keyword Microsoft Excel as a search term. First, we want to start by searching for Microsoft Excel course. As I'm doing this on my computer, I notice several things in the search results page. The first thing I see is four ads at the top of the page. That's an immediate indicator that people are spending money on the topic. If people weren't spending money, these people running ads wouldn't be making money. If they weren't making money, they wouldn't be running ads. Now, if you just saw one ad here, you may need to do some more digging because that may be just somebody throwing spaghetti and seeing if it sticks. But two or more ads means there is competition, which means there is actually money in the niche. Now, after you scroll past the ads to get to their search results, I see that there are courses on popular course platforms like Coursera, Lynda, and Udemy. These are some great indications that it's profitable and that there is interest on the topic. Now that we've researched, quote, keyword courses, which our keyword was Microsoft Excel, we'll also need to search things like keyword books, keyword magazines, keyword products, keyword coaching, keyword seminar, keyword webinar, or keyword event. Just replace the word keyword in any of those search terms with your actual niche. So what you would end up with is something like Microsoft Excel books or weight loss webinar. Make sure you use all these phrases for your five niches on your list, or at least the phrases that make sense in combination with your keyword. Be sure to take notes through this whole process as to everything that you see. Once you do all these searches, you should be able to look over your notes and get a pretty good idea of where you should go. Just keep in mind that it's not all about profitability. If you can't get excited about the topic, it'll be hard to find the motivation to make the business profitable. All right, hopefully that gave you some great ideas on things you can do or at least gave you a place to start. If you want to get this full list of niches that I just went over, head over to torfree.me slash niches, N-I-C-H-E-S. There you'll find the full mind map of niches in PDF format and the actual mind map file that is compatible with my favorite mind mapping software, which is also free. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review and all that stuff. It really does help others find the show. And hey, if you like the show, tell a friend. If you don't like the show, tell an enemy. Just tell somebody. 
I'm Jason Wyatt, and I'll see you on the road. Thanks so much for listening to Touring Freedom with your host, Jason Wyatt. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit touringfreedom.com on Twitter at Tour Free RV and on Instagram at Touring Freedom and Facebook.com slash Touring Freedom. We'll catch you next time on Touring Freedom.